this comes with Windows 10 Home. What the luck? Come on, let's get rid of that Windows Home. Let's get some Windows Pro. Copy and paste my code from the description. You can also get Office 2019. Just paste my code, Wolf. It's Windows Pro time. Yes, come on, you know what time it is, it's Dell XPS 15 time. Yes, I'm very excited to finally get this in the house. Hey, if you want to know anything about this laptop, make sure you sub up, because I'm going to cover it, compare it to MacBook Pro, I'll show you how to upgrade it, by the way, in the links in the description, is my recommended RAM and SSD to upgrade this. If you want to upgrade the RAM and SSD, it is compatible with this. You know, I'm going to do gaming review, content creation review, I'm going to compare the i7 to the i9, because I do have an i9 coming. This one here is the OLED i7, so let's have a look. Now, initially it comes in what I would term is the brown paper bag of, you know, boxes sort of thing here. And yeah, that's cool. They're not using so much ink. I like that. But it does have a nice box inside. So you take all that out of the box. And this is what you're left with. You know, nice and simple. What do we got here? This is 130 watt power supply. Now, it is the barrel connector, okay? So... You will not be charging through USB-C or Thunderbolt. You actually can charge, but it's a slow charging. Yeah, they haven't actually moved to USB-C or Thunderbolt for charging. They do have a 130 watt power supply that is USB-C from the XPS 2 in one. So we might have to wait until early next year when they redesign it, maybe, that it moves to all USB-C. That's not a big deal. This is the box that comes in this nice, sleek black box. And the initial thing is, when you first see this, you think, wow, 15 inch ain't gonna fit in this. And it does. Oh, my baby's back. My baby is back. Oh yeah. Now I've actually been using the MacBook Pro and I've been suffering now. I haven't been suffering. It's actually been not too bad. Well, one of the models I had was nearly on perfect, but in an ideal world, I'll be using the XPS 15 because I love these things. And I actually sold my last XPS 15 before CES because I thought there was going to be a new model of this coming out. So I've mistimed it. I've been XPS-less for a long time. Now here's the literature. Yeah, it's an XPS 15. I can't wait to see what this OLED display is like. Ooh, this XPS is sexy. They do make a sexy machine. I do wish it had that XPS logo here instead of the Dell. It's got that sort of pewter color. It is a nice finish on it. Now they have actually said that this is brand new all inside. So everything inside is brand new except for the shell. It does look slightly different there. But anyway, one Thunderbolt 3 combination headphone jack, HDMI, and USB Type-A, and there's the barrel connector there. So you can actually charge through that Thunderbolt, but it'll be very slow. So yeah, you have to use the barrel connector there. And look at that full size SD card slot, another USB 3, and then you have the battery indicator there. So it's nice and compact. It definitely feels more compact than the MacBook Pro. On the bottom, we have that service flap that just shows you your service number, and then you have the ventilation on the bottom, and you have the feet there. The feet is the same color as the body now, it's not black rubber. It does look nice and really does have a nice finish on it. So but it even gets better because when you open it, and no, you cannot do the one hand job with this part. Look at that glorious carbon fiber there. Wow. Now I wish they did have the white carbon or the white uh, glass finish. Really do wish they had that because this is a fingerprint magnet. It looks beautiful when it's new. And you got the finity edge display there. So yeah, let's have a look at this OLED. All right, so first impressions. Wow, wow, wow. Look at the pop of that OLED. I mean, we have both displays here, maximum brightness MacBook Pro on the left and the OLED XPS 15 7590. And to me, just looking at it, it looks like the XPS is actually brighter, even though that's supposed to be 400 nits and the MacBook Pro is supposed to be 500 nits now. A lot of these MacBook Pros, even though the claim spec is 500 nits, a lot of them come out 300, 350, 400. So there is a lot of variances in panels, and no two panels are the same. That's just how it is. But if I just look at these, subjectively here, we're going to get the camera to tell you, I will measure it as well. But the camera doesn't lie either. You'll be able to see in the color spectrum or in the video editor which one's brighter. It looks like the OLED's brighter. It's, there's definitely a difference in the pop. 
I mean, I'm just going to expose this a little bit more. Yeah, definitely looks to me like the OLED. I mean, you can see the pop of the OLED. That's just OLED. That's a trait of it. They are saturated. Oh, it's very hard to tell. Maybe the Mac is a little bit brighter. But here's the thing with the Mac, right? When you shift it to full brightness, the color shifts. What I mean by the color shifts is the colors get paler. So even though at max brightness, it is very bright display, the color shifts. So if I just drop that down two notches, you can see the colors get darker. Like what happens is the yellows are not as pale as they are when I increase the brightness and even the reds. The reds turn a little bit pink because once you increase the brightness, you know, you lose a bit of that saturation in the color because the colors get paler. But you can see here with the OLED, there's none of that happening. This is max brightness and the colors still look deep and rich. So the one thing about the Mac, I've always noticed that maximum brightness, yeah, the colors just shift as in they get paler. So yeah, that's one thing I have noticed. Now, with this XPS 15, there have been a few major upgrades. Now with this MacBook Pro, you only got a dropped in processor and that means you've got the 8 core i9 in it. Other than that, they've done nothing else with this, okay? Now there will be a new one coming soon, so maybe that's why they're not doing anything with it. But this thing has had some major upgrades. So even though it looks the same, we have three new displays. Full HD, we have the Ultra HD Touch EXO panel, and that is new as well, 500 nits of brightness. We have this OLED display which is uh, supposedly 400 nits of brightness. But as you can see there, mm, is it? Is it really? We'll find out. Now, everyone's using the same OLED panel. So I don't know why some manufacturers are claiming different nits than others. Like this is 400, other manufacturers are claiming it's 500, other manufacturers are claiming 600, where they're all using the same Samsung OLED panel. So I don't know if... Dell are more conservative, they're worried about burning and battery life, so maybe they don't put it as bright. I don't know what the reason for that is, but they are the same displays as far as I know. So which one do you reckon looks better or brighter? So as I was saying, this has major upgrades. Wi-Fi 6, okay, do you get Wi-Fi 6? You get new CPU, new GPU, and three display options. So major upgrades to this, even though it looks the same. This one, they just plonked in a new processor. I'm not even counting the keyboard, whatever they've done with that to try and fix it because that's not a new feature. So major upgrades with this, at least four different things, CPU, GPU, display, and Wi-Fi 6. There is a new one of this coming out. This one, we know with Dell's roadmap now, they're gonna have a new XPS 15 at the start of next year. So yeah, can't wait for that. But, so this should be the most perfected version of this XPS 15. But I will do comparison videos with this Mac. I'm going to do gaming review on this, video editing review, lots of reviews. So make sure you subscribe. This is my first quick look. I'll just have a quick look at thermals and then we'll crack on. I'll do the gaming review first. And yeah, I'm your one-stop shop. I'm going to show you how to upgrade it. My recommended RAM and SSD, again, are in the description. Um, you want to stay tuned if you're interested in this XPS 15. No one's going to test it like I have. You know, this had a great display when it came out, but I think now, you know, these have new displays from these Samsung. They're pretty good. I will say that it is very saturated. It does have that OLED look to it. So <laughs> some people might not like that, but um, yeah, the colors look, you know, other than one being more saturated than the other, the colors look, you know, that looks very pale compared to this, um, yeah. Hope you can see that. We'll test in the camera which one's brighter. Let's have a quick look at thermals. And then I'm gonna start testing it. Now the Mac was always the best in terms of um, reflections, right? There you can see reflections. Um, whatever coding I had on the Macs was really good. But what I can tell you now is with this XPS 15, I don't know what they've done, but it's better than the Mac in terms of reflections. So yeah. That's interesting. That's something new. They must have put some really nice coatings on this. Okay, okay. So what we can see here is we have a package limit of 56 watts. Now the Mac can do about 60, but it settles in at about 56. So that's really interesting. So it's pretty much the same as the MacBook Pro when it, in terms of what it will settle in at, at 56 watts there. So let's run Cinebench. 
let's have a look and we'll see what clock it settles in at, at 56 watts so i predict 3.2 or 3 something like that it's pretty much part of the course of all these um sort of laptops here um let's see what do we got all right so we have a temperature whoa we hit 100 straight away boom now so any news about thermal upgrades no it's the same thermal package there we're pushing 67 watts at the moment we're pushing um frequency is 3.2 3.3 so it's already settled down to 3.2 already now i have actually done a like a prime 95 and yes it'll it'll hit 100 don't worry about that it'll stay there but it doesn't really throttle down that much so far 3.1 okay this could do a bit of an undervolt i could say with an undervolt i think it'll be really good now dell don't undervolt theirs as far as i know they don't undervolt it i'll check that but we can see here it's settling down at 3 gigahertz now that's very interesting right because this is the six core now the mac can probably do 3 gigahertz and it's settled down there you can see it settled down at the package of 55 watts 56 watts now the mac can do 60 okay so this is something dull have set themselves in the bios so they can increase this or decrease it but yeah three gigahertz so the mac with eight cores can actually do you know the same sort of frequency in um in cinebench because that's all governed down there it's not so much temperature temperature all right it's 90 degrees whatever i mean there's not that much room to wiggle anyway but um yeah 56 watt they've decided that's the sort of package it is 56 watts with it equals 3 3.1 and a temperature of about 90 so yeah that's the thermal package here i have to try it under vaulted see how we go what score we get that's part of the course with these sort of you know ninth generation 9750 h's um that's about right some are higher some are lower undervolted i will say in the defense here although i don't think it will go much faster i am still charging um also you gotta remember 56 watts that's what it's going to be three gigahertz 3.1 so that's where it's going to sit no matter what unless they change the bios now cinebench look at that score 12 54 now that is undervolted but um yeah, it hasn't been in my last XPS 15, which I could get over 1300, but 1254, there ain't many um, laptops that do that sort of thing with R15.